well, like uh, the not the fountains, but like uh, not only fountains, but yeah, like... uh, those steps in the uh, cities in old times. Water was for free, you know. Yeah. I was thinking, hey, in a city, maybe a couple of places, uh, it can drop like water, and it can mean that you can buy water with that one. Yeah. At some like point. <laughs> Yeah, in this, yeah right. in this analogy, we had to uh, build uh, creative common wells, right? Like, then, then that yeah. like, propagates a community. Like, here's here's a good right. resource of information <clears throat> and stuff that could like you guys could grow from. And yeah, I if you're in Italy riding your bike, you can go into any town there, and there's a there's a, a water thing. You can fill up your water bottle in every town. <laughs> it's like there's not a town <laughs> that doesn't have a freaking well that's part of the commons right what are those yeah. wells made from i don't know i just remember brick, when i was brick, uh, back in brick. my bike racing days brick follow me here you're gonna like this okay okay the the the, 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 the crypto um the multidisciplinary crypto renaissance man of the future is mm -hmm. the stonemason of the past yeah why true. did they build those fountains you know that's and, true and, and that crypto commons might look different than brick in a circular square if you will yeah. <laughs> but uh it might actually be more like hey how where are these i mean remember when right. dot com were, were crazy all of a sudden there were these yeah. internet cafes and the whole point yep. was like most of them people that were running the internet weren't even doing it from their house and, that's and, true. and that was because yeah. now there's this push to get these diverse this diverse set of minds in there and now there's all this data that pops up where people who were early to the game can start to organize that and then you got this whole other era that breeds well that's happening right now and those fountains are kind of creeping up and what you're asking is what makes that what makes that mason give a darn to go down there and work for that guy when he could just go to the next town and work for the other king right what what is that that makes him stick around there well he probably likes the culture and that mason that works there that that's probably something unique that's going on where there's this um greater organization of people who support and know the tools in the of the trade or the trade right and, the, and like the the um, layers and the hierarchy of the wisdom that comes from that very real world experience and the, the spiritual like existence that's behind it so that's already happening everywhere we look in crypto universes and when mm -hmm. wouldn't you <laughs> You know, really, I see a lot of that here at Omega. I mean, I haven't wandered into too many other places because I've been having to keep my blinders on lately. <laughs> I've been overwhelmed, but I, I see a lot of that happening where um, it seems like that's what everybody's starting to identify is the, the what is the well, what is the water that's there for everybody. Um, but then what are the blocks that is not necessarily there for everybody? People have to put that there and get together and, and decide what those are. And, and maybe it's different in every location. Like, the, I mean, a block is made up of different stuff everywhere you go, but it's the same general. And, I, know, I've got something great. further uh, in your, to advance your metaphor even further, if you'd like. Yeah, please. please. So in, uh, in, We're running with in it, Vedanta, we have this Mithya and Satya, right? Mithya being the, all of the, the, the frames of reference, right? So you could say, what is the river? Well, the river is uh, H2O. The river is the goddess, uh, you know, Gange, Ganga. The, the, the river is, um, you, know, uh, you know, bound by gravity and, and certain, you know, uh, features. It's carved its way through. You can say a lot of different things about the Ganges River. All of them would be correct. All of them are also only correct inside of their given frame of reference, and that's what Mithya is. And what we do in these various communities is that we basically um, say this frame of reference above all of the frame of references, you know, um, <laughs> and instead of being like, we've got to pull ourselves up and out of that and be able to switch frames of reference at any point so that we can keep on the Satya side of the picture. Now, what I'm what I'm pointing out is one of the other things that we talk about in uh, non-dual Vedanta is that we actually, um, uh, there's a metaphor, um, like if you take uh, the, the unified uh, and the divided, right? I can say, um, uh, the the unified is uh, just a clay, all clay everywhere in the world or in the universe, right? And then um, what I'm going to do with that clay is I'm going to take and make a pot. But if you if you think about it from a certain perspective, um, 
the the clay is all there is there is no pot really the pot is is fashioned from clay right and you can break the the clay down from that clay pot and make another useful thing out of it but it is that thing i can continuously you know use because it's even though I might fashion it into a pot, it's always clay fundamentally. And I think what we have to do is make sure that we're rewarding the fact that clay is existing, or in your in your metaphor, the brick. And then the brick is then assembled into <laughs> into a, a, a well, which is then you know used for the common good. And what I find is that we tend to stop at um, okay, now there are bricks, and then that's it. Or now there's a pot. And and that's it. Or now there's a, you know what I'm saying? And everyone's really interested in creating the new thing out of the clay, you know, but <laughs> but no one's actually uh, talking about the, the, the clay. Um, and what's, you know, the, and what's the well? What's the water? What's the butter, my man? What's the butter, ex Krishna? Exactly. Right? What's, the, yeah. what's the essence? Exactly. It seems to me it's inspiration, but it's got to be guided inspiration, right? Yeah, like, the butter, the ghee, right? the, you know, in the, in the, um, in the, uh, uh, there's a famous uh, s section from the the Mahabharata that's that's relevant here. Um, anyway, I could go on and on. I'm 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 all over the place. But um, my my point about this is that I think that that we talk about the commons, you know, but we only talk about the commons of people, right? We don't extend the same courtesy of the commons of people. Um, and frankly, we're one of the only DAOs that does this, you know, dealing with the commons uh, as a thing in token engineering comes. We need to take that commons idea a little bit further than we are. And that's why I'm I'm sort of constantly pushing to, um, you know, make this, this more interesting. But one of the things I want to do is three words in three languages and etymology talk a lot about. Um, so one exists, right? Comes from the Latin existere, which means to step forth or emerge. But then there's also a thing called liminality where we're in the divided and we're trying to make the divided more liminal like because we can see that there's more complexity we can see that there's more unification just outside of the boundary of our awareness right and so my job is to be able to show the relationship between the liminality which is trying to kind of escape and become the unified and the 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 unified which has has coalesced into like a you know like maybe the metaphor could be like a cloud which is suddenly uh rains you know and i love that uh, one song it was a stevie nicks it says clouds never expect it when it rains well the unified never expects anything because there's there's no time so when it rains you know then time starts to exist and then the word time actually um the 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 root of the word time in the english language uh, comes from the word part which is to divide or separate <laughs> What's also interesting is the Sanskrit word for time is kala, which is, comes from the verbal root kal, which means count or calculate. And so it's interesting when you just look at first principles, which we often don't <laughs> in our work, you know, just etymology and really basic stuff. And we miss so much because we've gotten so used to the metaphorical ground substance that we forget that there's a underlying set of principles on which those metaphors are based. And my point about that is, is that there are some of those metaphors which are already colonized that are, that, that are outside of our understanding and exist in the psychological shadow. And I'm all the time trying to pry that open and get people to look inside of that stuff so that we can make systems that uh, end up more correct by uh, every uh, possible uh, measure and beyond. So anyway, that's my little um, sermon for today. Thank you all for coming. Interesting stuff, man. Thanks for saying all that. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Good chats.